Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Chris Dale, and today I have yet another video on web hacking, and specifically, we're targeting the over the wire web challenges. Uh, specifically, they're called Natus, and we're on level 23. So, what we have here is some kind of password field where we can try input some kind of data. And basically, if it says wrong or wrong, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposing we're going to see if we can get it to say right and give us the password for the next level. So the first thing I want to do targeting such a form is intercept this request with burp suits and then control I on my keyboard, send it to the intruder. Now, once I have it in the intruder, I already have it highlighted here for my input data. I want to fuss this input now. So the first thing I'm going to fuss is basically I'm going to fuss, let's see, I'm going to go to my repository here. So I got some repos here. I got my pen testing repo. And in my pen testing repo, I got basically URL encoded bytes. So as you can see, I just added a list of 256 characters, basically from 00, zero all the way down to FF. This could also have been done with the numbers payload type here, and I could have prefixed the percentage sign, but I find the word list being a bit quicker. Now, I can now start the attack to see what happens, and I can also add a little payload processing rule while the one in the background runs. And this payload uh, processing rule, I wanted to say decode, and I want to URL decode these bytes here to see how the application behaves when I do this type of fussing. So let's go to the first window first here, and we can see that the content length of all of these are the same. There is no difference whatsoever in my attack here. I can add the columns of response completed, measuring response time, and notice this, whenever, whenever I gave it here a percent 84, I had a huge response completed time here. So this is a little bit of indicator for me that, hmm, maybe I got something to work on here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to request Adam again, and you can see that it just disappeared, down to 54. So that was a fa false positive. Something happened on the network, causing that request to take a bit longer. So right now, I don't have a much to go on with this vector. Looking at this one, we get 500 in length, and it also says status 400. So I'm going to sort on status code here first. I'm, I'm going to ignore all of the ones with 1242 as the content length. And I'm going to just go further down here to see what we can find. I don't see any specific, like some any interesting request where the, comp, where the result type is 200. And 400, most of the time, 400 is not going to be that interesting for me. Because it's basically saying that my request is invalid and the request is now stopped at the request handler of the web server. I never hit the application logic here. So, so far, I'm kind of stumped here. Where do I go from this? Now, I can try other fuzzing lists, for example. I can, I can add, for example, the fuzzing quick here, the fuzzing full. I can add some payloads and so on, so on, so on to see how this application behaves. But most likely, I'm going to be out of luck here. I'm not getting any type of 500 error messages. So all the status codes are 200 here, which is, which is uh, OK. Uh, that means that there is. If the process, the request is being processed naturally by the web server. So we're kind of out of luck in terms of just fussing this straight on. Kind of interesting that we're not getting any results from these whenever we're including these uh, uh, greater than less than symbols. That's a bit interesting, but we do get them up here. So maybe we want to request these again just to see if there's something something up or not, but never, nevertheless, these are getting dropped by some firewall or something in the middle here. So it's probably nothing for me to go by, nothing for me to hang on to here. So then I'm thinking, how can I attack this script here in other ways? One thing would be to start to do content discovery, like I did in my last video, where we can start to see if we can find attributes like developer equals on and so on. Maybe we can find some extra headers that might make the application behave differently, like, for example, an X4 by IP here. Like, who knows? Maybe this application will behave differently. 
But in this case, we do have this password field, so I'm, I'm kind of confident that we have something to do. It has something to do with the password field up here. So what I'm going to do then instead, I'm going to try to fuss. I'm going to fuss the attributes, the, the, the parameter here. I'm going to fuss this one. I'm also going to fuss this field up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fussing list that is targeting PHP. Here we go. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to add these payloads here to this position here and also afterwards to this position here just because I want to experiment. So you can see that I got some true, false, zeros and ones, some strings, some nulls, array, PHP, some bytes here, carriage return and line feeds. I got some brackets open, brackets closed, curly brackets open, curly brackets closed and so on. So I'm just, I'm basically just experimenting to see if I can find any type of content or any type of difference. And we do have something interesting. If you notice this, notice the content line here is 1388. Whereas over here is 1242. 1242, we kind of can, we can kind of write it off as acceptable or okay. Uh, not counting in timing attacks here. So here, with, when we are giving these brackets, we're given a different type of results. And this is a pretty interesting one. Let me request this one in my browser. So it says, the string string command expects parameter one to be a string. An array is given in var www blah, 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 line 23. So that's wrong. Now that's kind of interesting. Uh, because in PHP, we do have things like um, uh, type juggling, meaning that we can evaluate a string as true, given, for example, an input of true. We can perhaps convert a variable from a string into an array, which is what we just did here. And maybe some kind of evaluation later on will reveal that this is actually uh, the correct input value, like probably done with an equal equal. I want to show you a PHP, PHP type juggling stack overflow. And I want to show you all the different ways that Twitter, searching Twitter. Why are you so stupid, Firefox? That's not what I wanted to do. I want to show you the different types of juggling behaviors. Uh, stack overflow. All right. So it might be this one here, where we have a good, yeah, look at this. Here's a simple test of true. We have an array of strings, an empty string, the string test, a decimal or a floating number, um, integer, integer, and all zeros, and a zero, and a null. The thing is, if you evaluate these with this test here, you will see that if the variable currently iterated true here is true. It will print out true or it will print out false. Notice that, for example, the string test is true. The decimal zero, zero here is true. This number is true. This number here, zero, which is a string zero, by the way, is also now false. And the variable null here is false. So you can see that PHP has all of this type juggling type of magic behind the scenes that might allow you to find bugs. So having this error here, we might be able to tweak our attack a little bit. So let's see. Let's think about this. So I'm converting this to a per, uh, an array and we're getting an error from the source code saying that it's not a string. So let's do this. And now let's fuss from here. We're gonna do URL code bytes. And just wanna I just wanna see what type of behavior we might be looking at here. So we're seeing all these 1388s and we don't have any 200s where the result is different than 1388. So that's probably not what we're looking for then. Uh, I'm gonna do the URL decode off as, as well just because I wanna hit the source code. Uh, I don't wanna hit the web server, I wanna hit the source of the PHP code. That's why I turned off the URL decode there. But still, it's behaving as we would expect. So by now, 
I'm kind of running out of options. I'm kind of stumped. There should be a password. We don't have the password. We don't want to start password guessing because that would be boring. So I'm thinking we're going to look at the source code here. So source code is telling us first HTML stuff, we have input form, and then we have the PHP code. If array key password exists in the requests array, which it is, and if the string string, so if I love you is part of the password, meaning that the password must be I love you, but it says wrong. If this is true and the password is more than 10 in length, then we get the credentials for the next level. But I love you is not 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so so this seems like it's impossible, right? It, the password cannot be I love you. And at the same time, ampersand, ampersand here. So at the same time, the password is more than 10 characters. That seems like it's impossible. Unless we have some kind of type juggling type of uh, vulnerability here. So what we're going to do is I'm thinking remove this. Do I love you here? And then we fuss here with the word list of, let's see, PHP stuff. PHP fuss. So that's basically going to add from I love you, we're going to add it to the end here. I just want to try. You can see how quick it is for me to try anyway. So it's not very time consuming. That did not work. Uh, what if we did it like this? Just experimenting here. Same results. So then what if what if I added a second payload here? Like this. And I would do a cluster bomb attack. So a double for loop, where the first loop is basically a brute forcer. Characters A. We're going to go from length 1 to, say, 8, right? And the second here is going to be the PHP fuss. Just to see if we can variable, vary with the length. I'm just experimenting here. I don't necessarily have a really good sense of direction where I'm heading yet. And that did not work. As you can see what we're doing here, we're doing a simple A and then false and then the word I love you. Because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make this one true. So the string string command, let's do a PHP manual on this one. And for some reason it searches Twitter. That's probably setting in my, my Firefox here. So PHP string string. So let's see, we're looking for a string in a haystack. So, so the haystack is what we're looking into and we our needle that we're looking for is our input and seems decent to be honest. I don't see any necessary problems with this. Here you can see. Uh, yeah, so so I see where we're going here. I see where, what we're going for. So if I love you is a part of the password and the password is more than 10, then we're in. That means that I can do AA, I love you, AA, and we're not in. So A, A, I love you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it must be more than ten. And that did not work. So and a request password more than ten. So more than ten. Ideally, I would want to have PHP right now at my fingertips just to see how this statement here evaluates. So if the request password has I love you in it. But we already tested for these conditions, I believe. It would work. So it doesn't work. That leads me to believe that we might have to change the type maybe here. So this one has to be a string. Otherwise, it failed, right? Because if we did it like this,
But if it's empty, nothing. If we did like this, we get a warning. So a warning. Ooh, a warning is not an error, but it still does not give us a solution. All right, so kind of stumped here, but there must be something type juggling-ish with this. So let's think. We have ampersand ampersand, meaning that this one must be true in order for this one to be a value, and then this one must be true for this to happen. So request password. Does it have I love you in it? Let's let's recreate this in verb suit here. I'm gonna send this through repeater. Repeater is a bit better to use. And does password have I love you in it? Yes, it does. Find the first occurrence of a string. All right. So then we do, so this is length. So let's now do just like this. And it's just wrong. So I would expect this to be the correct length. Does not work at all. So what if then, What if then, instead of ace, remember this? This is evaluated to an int 124. Hmm. What if now we, instead of doing ace, what if we did like 124? Nope. What if we did 124, I love you? <laughs> and there we go. Look at this. This is PHP, like the three-wheel bike it is. It's not, It's so funky, man. Look at this. We do a number, like 124, I love you, and we get the credentials for the next level. And this is crazy. There are so many bugs within, I wouldn't say bugs, but, but weird stuff that will happen when you write PHP code leading into bugs because we just took this here, 124, in the start of the string, and for... For some reason, PHP decided to evaluate that length here as more than 10. It's 124. And then it evaluates this as a string afterwards. So it can be both an integer and a string. And it did contain I love you. Yes, it did up here. Hence, that also evaluated as true. So, wow, just imagine how many bugs you can find if you have access to the source code, or if you can come up with clever ways of fussing PHP code like the ones that I showed you today. So for my solution here, I'm not sure how, how I would fuss and solve this challenge without having access to the source code, but it kind of proves a point that having access to source code gives you a great advantage in finding bugs, and you can find these types, uh, type squatting or type juggling type of uh, vulnerabilities. So guys, that was it. We're gonna have a new challenge coming up very soon. If you liked the video, of course, leave a like on it. If you want to be notified when I have new videos coming out, be sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Hope you liked it. 